Howdy! This is that cosplay guy, Michael. And I am here today, or tonight, or whatever your chronological uh, situation is. Um, I am here to tell you today about the uh, cosplay kit that uh, cosplayers and costumers carry around with them. So this one's going to be short and sweet. Let's do this. A cosplay kit is a collection of items stored within a readily accessible kit or bag that cosplayers and costumers uh, take with them during costuming events like conventions or photo shoots um, to maintain or repair their costumes or props if they come loose or they break. Uh, also known as a emergency cosplay repair kit or a convention survival kit, uh, the list of the standard items uh, to, that they put in these kits are usually about the same, um, no matter uh, what uh, costuming uh, clan or community that they come from, um, which pretty much uh, scissors, a needle and thread, safety pins, glue and tape will usually appear in every kind of kit. Uh, well, of course, there will be additional items on top of that, but those items are usually the ones that appear in there the most. Uh, but again, they vary. Having said that, each kit uh, usually assembled um, to suit the individual cosplayer's costuming needs. Um, for example, uh, a full body, uh, body paint cosplay um, will need uh, different items to be repaired than, say, a heavy armor. Uh, cosplay costume would. Um, for example, you probably won't need a needle and thread for a body paint costume. Um, you also probably won't need uh, additional wires and batteries uh, for a body paint costume, but you would for a, a heavily mechan mechanized, heavily mechanized uh, armor cosplay. So yeah. The size and expanse of a kit varies from cosplayer to cosplayer, costume to costume, community to community, um, ranging from large kits that contain a collection of precise tools and items that are designed to fix a vast array of problems, uh, to a small basic kit that may solely contain a pair of scissors, a needle and thread, safety pins, glue and tape, and a bottle of water because it's not just the costume that has to be looked after, but the actual costumer. The person inside the costume also needs to be looked after. That is actually a uh, most frequently overlooked part of the costume is the actual person inside. Uh, so storing and carrying a kit varies, of course, depending on the size of the kit. Um, and the type of the costume and cosplayer uh, is wearing. Some kits can be stored directly inside the costume um, or underneath an armor piece or on, on, could be on a pouch sitting in the, uh, the costume's belt um, or as part of a backpack um, that the costume costumer wears um, or other times a cosplay minder will be carrying a kit on them as part of their supportive duties. Uh, con parents that's uh, convention parents. Uh, look that up in the cosplay terms and phrases uh, part of my videos thing to work out what a con parent is. Because knowing is half the battle. And education and knowledge is handy weapons to have in any scenario. Moving on. Uh, so con parents also tend to have at least a basic kit on hand. Just it's, it's part of the definition of being a con parent. Uh, every, everly reliable. Anyway, so that's what a cosplay kit is. Essentially a little... Uh, it's a kit of items to repair one's cos costume. And to, yeah, support the cosplayer. Okay, history. The habit of carrying a repair kit for the costume one is wearing is pretty much the byproduct of the saying, uh, be prepared. Um, and can be traced back to the non-costuming world's habit of carrying a small makeup kit in a bag to touch up one's makeup as the day progresses. Um, or the habit of carrying a small sewing kit 
um, in case a dress rips or a button comes loose. Um, look inside your uh, grandmother's handbag. You'll probably find a spare... Um, I'm, I'm working on stereotypes here, of course. Not everyone's grandma's probably has one. But, um, yeah, not mine did. Uh, had a... Yeah, it was a sewing needle. She had everything. It was like a, it was like a wondrous bag of holding, her handbag. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, small snacks and first aid items. Um, usually band-aids and pain medication. Uh, uh, allergy medication, etc. Also kept just in case. Um, in addition to other items like tissues or uh, spare reading glasses or sunglasses. Um, can go all the way up to uh, carrying an umbrella just in case it rains. These are, uh, this is the origins of the cosplay kit. The real world just in case kit. I guess the handbag. Essentially, it's, this is an example of the real world habit making its way into costuming culture and sticking. Even Rotzler's rules uh, recommend that fan costumers carry a repair kit for their costumes while attending conventions. This is Rotzler's rule number 11. Uh, carry a repair kit with appropriate tools and materials. These rules uh, were made in 1975. So uh, these kits have been around since the mid-70s. Alrighty. Uh... As awareness and popularity of the cosplay kit grew within the cosplay and costuming culture, a new type of uh, uh, costuming kit related costume uh, rose, uh, known as the cosplay medic. Uh, these are LARPers, live action role players. In essence, uh, they act in a similar manner to uh, medical personnel in a battlefield. Uh, except instead of uh, being uh, there to repair people, they're there to repair costumes. Um, so, yes, yeah, so a cosplay medic carries equipment um, on them intended to address uh, tears and breakages of costumes and props within the convention, as their entire costume was built for the intention of repairing gear. Um, a cosplay medic would carry a large assortment of tools and items uh, than a typical cosplayer would. Um, and they would, yeah, wander, just meander around a convention uh, for the, their sole intention and purpose is to help other cosplayers with their costumes. So, yeah, cosplay medic. It was also around uh, this time, as the cosplay medic rose, that another cosplay kit related trend began to occur in conventions. It was the, um, the cosplay repair station um, began to grow, which is an entire convention booth uh, devoted solely to um, repairing costumes. Uh, the spirit of the costume repair station uh, evolved from the notion of uh, medieval blacksmiths in fantasy settings offering to uh, buff out the kinks in an adventurer's armor as they come into town. In this case it was um, buff out the kinks in your costuming uh, armor while you go into the convention. Um, so yeah, for, after a few costume check-in stations began offering service at conventions um, some generous spirits began setting up convention booths catering specifically to the act of costume prop repair. Kit contents. Uh, this is pretty much the number one question asked, uh, always related with uh, cosplay convention kits, is um, when they're assembling their own kit, uh, they always ask what, what needs to go in their kit and stuff like that. Uh, essentially, the answer is always the basics. Um, pair of scissors. Uh, needle and thread, just, just a small one. Um, safety pins, uh, glue and tape are the bare essentials and stuff like that. Um, and also um, a bottle of water to keep one hydrated. And that's, that's the bare essentials for a cosplay kit, but uh, the contents go up from there. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, so the size of the kit and the detail of the items within is largely up to the cosplayer and costumer 
and their preferences. They can range um, in size from a small portable little lunchbox to a large sports bag and beyond. Uh, it, it's all about um, how much uh, how much equipment a cosplayer can lug around um, and whether they have help. And yeah, it's, it's all about practicality, really. A uh, majority of cosplayers have just a small one. So, yeah. Um, I have uh, my... In my blog, I have uh, a list of the items that uh, appear and kits um, that I have uh, researched. Um, so, yeah, if you're ever looking for a, of, of things to possibly put in, you do not necessarily need to put everything in. Like I said, it all depends on what your costume is. Um, a spandex uh, tight Spider-Man or Power Ranger suit uh, will not need the same items as a heavy armor Spartan or a, what else we got? A Mandalorian or a, a, a Gundam. Uh, Warhammer costumes and stuff like that need a much larger repair kit than, say, uh, a Sailor Moon uh, dress. Uh, Disney Princess dress will need a lot more needle and thread um, in their dress than, say, uh, a Mandalorian armor would. So, yeah, it's you, you need to... Uh, what's, what's the word? You, you need to alter your cosplay kit depending on what kind of costume you're wearing. And, like I said again, don't forget about yourself. Don't forget about the person inside the costume and stuff like that. The person that um, needs... You will need painkiller medication. If you have allergies, maybe some al allergy. Uh, some water, some snacks and stuff like that. You won't, don't want to fall over, keel over in um, dehydration or hunger. Just because you're wearing a, a completely awesome costume. Uh, so, yeah, look after yourself. Look after the costume look after yourself wearing the costume too. You matter, kids. Okay, unique trends. Okay, uh, unique trends incorporating the kit into your costume. So it's not uncommon for cosplayers to want to have a repair kit, but still keep their hands free. So they don't want to walk around the convention uh, just carrying a bag throughout the entire convention and that, that bag's just full of their repair gear. Uh, they want to have both hands free to go shopping or pose or it's just more convenient to have um, both your hands free. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, so they incorporate their kit inside their costume or as part of their costume or they attach their kit to their costume in some way so they don't have to carry it around. Uh, heavy... Uh, heavy armor and armored cosplayers sometimes hide their kits inside their armor. So like um, like the big uh, mecha war suits, uh, war hammer suit cosplayers will sometimes hide uh, a small kit under their chest armor. So the chest armor will come off and their repair kit will be attached to their chest. And they'll just put the armor over the top of that. And there you go. Readily acceptable, accessible but still have your hands free. Um, some cosplayers uh, with capes will uh, put their kits um, under the cape behind their back. Or ones with jackets will do the same, but inside the jacket. So yeah, cosplay repair kits inside there, hidden. Um, costumes with belts that have pouches, um, same thing, the cosplay kit might, the kit pieces might be distributed throughout the, the pouches. So yeah. Okay, another trend. The steampunk seamstress. Steampunk seamstress is a, uh, a type of steampunk costume or theme themed around the image of a steampunk fantasy seamstress. Uh, while the classic steampunk visual theme is that of a, uh, a steam age tech being interwoven into the costume, um, a steampunk seamstress utilizes sewing tools such as cotton spindles, scissors, measuring tapes, thimbles and needles into the costume design to give the look of an adventuring seamstress um, in, in fantasy settings. 
as the use of clothing repair tools is literally part of the design many steampunk seamstresses make their costumes so that they can actually use uh, their tools on their costume uh, should they need to so the the scissors that's attached to the hat can actually come off and they can actually use it to repair thing and then they put it back on stuff for them uh, the the costume is uh, completely uh, practical and usable cosplay medic uh, like I previously mentioned in the history section, uh, Cosplay Medic is an individual who attends conventions and get-togethers, uh, carrying tools and items for the express purpose of mending the costumes of others uh, that attend the conventions or get-togethers. They're usually benevolent souls who voluntarily lend their time and expertise wandering the convention floor for the specific purpose of assisting others. Then we have the Costume Cosplay Repair Stations. Um, are similar to the cosplay medic, uh, repair stations are stores created by cosplay medics for the same purpose. However, while a uh, cosplay medic's um, tools are limited due to they have to be mobile, they have to move, um, a, a repair station is a stall and it's a stationary location so they can set up complete tables and heavy repair gear uh, to further assist cosplayers and their costumes and stuff like that. Okay, next trend, the Spider-Man web pack. Uh, spandex costumes have always been notoriously difficult in regards to the wearer being able to carry items such as merchandise and repair kits because, you know, no pockets. Uh, even uh, Spider-Man doesn't even have a belt. I mean, anyway. While still being in character, uh, Spider-Man cosplayers usually resorted to taking uh, school-grade backpacks uh, to carry their items and kits as the various uh, spider characters they portray are shown in the media to carry school backpacks uh, so they can still stay in character while wearing the backpack. Because yeah, Spider-Man um, most of the time is uh, either attending high school or attending university and stuff like that so he, he carries his backpack. So he can still be in character as a spider uh, while carrying your backpack and have all your repair gear and your merchandise for that in the backpack. But around 2015-2016, uh, an industrious cosplayer found a way to recreate another method that Spider-Man uses to carry his items and spare clothes. Uh, the web pack. Um, in the comic books, uh, you, you, um, Spidey, or, or Peter Parker, um, would sometimes uh, ball up all of his uh, clothes, his civilian clothes, um, or his shoes and stuff like that. Um, into a, a literal ball of, of webbing. Uh, and you either stick that ball onto a, a wall um, in an alleyway somewhere so that he can go and do his uh, do whatever a spider can and come back and get, get dressed back into his civilian gear later on. Or he will carry the, the ball on his back and stuff like that as his own impromptu backpack. Um, so anyway, this uh, Spider-Man cosplayer has... Uh, worked out a way to recreate that uh, on their own, crafting ingenious cosplayers, uh, always coming up with new stuff. So it's created using a bowl, um, a bowl, sorry, a plastic, uh, the kind of plastic bowl you um, put your, your chips and snacks in, party mix. Um, a bowl, glue, and multiple balls of string. Uh, so, yeah. And online uh, Spider-Man costume retailers soon began selling their own web packs and assembling a web pack uh, on by their own. Um, quickly became a kind of a, a, a trending rite of rite of passage for Spider-Man cosplayers. Uh, having said that, uh, this right here, if you can see in the background, that's uh, my web Spider-Man web pack. There it is. And you know what? I'll get it for you. This is mine. Made it myself and stuff like that. So, yeah, essentially, uh, for, uh, essentially a, a, a chips bowl wrapped with um, string and glue. And we just, uh, we add some shoulder straps onto it and we just put it onto our back. Like so. Um, and we have a little, uh, we, we cut a little hole in there and we can put various items. Uh, let's, let's see if I've got 
what have I got in here? Uh, I've got a little some Spider-Man merchandise in here. I've got a it's, uh, well anyway yes yes Spider-Man merchandise. So you just. And yeah, I mean, just Spider Man, Spider Man just carried this around with us. So, of course, obviously, it's not very big. But I guess the job done, and we hide our um, cosplay kits in here as well if we need to. Uh, drinks, bottles. No. Nope. So, anyway, that's pretty much it for trends, and that's pretty much the, the nitty gritty of. Um, Cosplay kits. Um, to close this off, I'll show you my cosplay kit. Uh, this is it here. It's it's fairly small. This is my standard kit. Um, if I want to go bigger, I usually have a um, I have my web pack. If I want to go Spider Man, or um, I have uh, I have a uh, kind of like a briefcase suitcase if I'm going as um, Lloyd Forger. Um, because because it fits with the cosplay and stuff like that. Um, I usually I just throw this into the briefcase. Anyway, so pretty standard. This is a uh, a standard little traveling um, traveling case. I think people uh, usually put toiletries and stuff like that in this. So anyway, let's see. We have uh, a mirror, so one can uh, reflect on oneself. When you're putting stuff on, uh, I've got uh, a miniature uh, sewing kit here. Well, again, needle and thread. Uh, I've got safety pins here. Getting the standard. Um, it doesn't have to be that big. Okay, I've got some um, some grease. If you can see on the reflection, I've got some grease blotters, uh, little little pieces of paper that you dab onto your your face and stuff like that, just to remove the the natural grease. Uh, stops your skin from shining. It's um, it's a modeling, it's a modeling habit. Uh, what else? We have uh, foundation. Never leave home without this. It's a skin tone foundation. This is the basic of uh, makeup stuff like that. So as the day progresses, I'm um, just touch up your foundation and stuff like that to look good. Uh, we have a brush, of course, for the hairs and the wigs and the glaven. We have tissues uh, for if, if one gets emotional. Um, or not, I mean, it can be... Uh, tissues are handy for a lot of things, not just blowing one nose and stuff like that. It's for cleaning and whatever, and it mightn't just be for you. It might be for someone else that you know. Because uh, cosplaying is a community, and we gotta help each other in this uh, this this cruel, cruel world. Uh, we've got a pair of scissors and stuff like that. This is um, this is part of the sewing kit and stuff like that. This is uh, thread clipping scissors. So, and that's basically well, not basically that pretty much is it uh, in my cosplay kit. Putting up plenty of room to put more stuff if need be. Um, there. And again, when I actually go to a convention, I'll also have a bottle of water and some some snacks, uh, just small snacks like muesli bars and stuff like that. Uh, not nothing greasy, nothing saucy, because uh, that stuff will uh, get on the costume stuff like that. So you got to think about stuff, uh, safe foods to eat, safe drinks to drink, and stuff like that. Stains, yeah, it's it's all complex. Uh, but once you get into it, um, yeah. Anyway, that is essentially all that there is to uh, to know about for cosplay kits. It's a repair kit based on the the adage of being prepared. In case the worst thing happens, uh, your costume falls off um, while waiting to go up on stage and stuff like that. Um, there's there's many costuming nightmare stories. Where that has happened, and uh, people have been saved because someone with a cosplay repair kit has been handy uh, to uh, repair it with uh, duct tape. Uh, one, one of my favourite uh, movie quotes from uh, what was it? A uh, Sister Act Two was um, uh, was it? One should always have uh, a little faith and a lot of duct tape. 
So yeah. Thank you. And that was from, coming from a nun. So you know. Anyway, cosplay repair kits done. Um, if you have any uh, any further questions, please hit me up, and I'll try to answer them and add them onto my uh, my onto the article that I have um, on my blog. So because again, I'll, I'll keep on saying this. Uh, this entire project is about the hows, who's, what's, where's, when's, and cosplay, cosplaying, and cosplayers, and cosplay repair kits, repair kits, and cosplay repair kits is part of it. So, yeah. I think that's pretty much it, and we're going to, yeah, we'll leave it right here. This is that cosplay guy, Michael, signing off. And I gotta say, I am satisfied with my care. Till next time.